a critical history of western philosophy greek medieval and modern why masi preface in the early days of logical positivism it was contended that metaphysics is pseudoscience and as such it had to be denounced wholesale in this connection some sense of the some of the essays of moritz schlick of professor r carnap and professor a j ayers language truth and logic are worth mentioning however even at this time it was suggested that after all met- metaphysics need not be science at all it may be just a kind of poetry however professor r carnap and professor a j ayer reject this way of viewing metaphysics professor r carnap remarks that the pages of metaphysics are full of arguments and polemics but a poetry is never constituted of them hence he does not regard metaphysics as poetry in the same strain professor a j ayers uh, a j ayer uh, holds that a poem is a conscious attempt at expressing and arousing emotions by means of nonsensical statements as opposed to this a metaphysician unknowingly lapses into linguistic confusion in the vain attempt of knowing the world by non scientific means further some positivists like richard von mises do not accept the validity of the distinction between science and poetry mrs holds that poetry does not indulge in nonsensical statements even poetry conveys according to him cognitive meaning so metaphysics too according to this writer is a sort of science it is a form of science in its stage of beginning now most probably the majority of empirists would not regard metaphysics as a form of science even in its initial stage for them metaphysical statements lack cognitive meaningfulness however they may hold that these statements are characterized by significant nonsense wittgenstein or that they may be helpful in seeing the world in a fresh and interesting way or that metaphysical statements are schizophrenic verbalism here the views of m lazarowitz are interesting like a dream a metaphysical theory is a production of the unconscious and has both sense and motivation we enjoy it and are rip- are repelled by it gives us pleasure or pain a feeling of security or one of danger a metaphysical theory i shall try to show is a verbal dream the linguistic substructure of which has to be uncovered before we see what it comes to know what it comes to and how it produces its effect within the pages of this book i have assumed that the empirical attack has conclusively shown that metaphysics is not a cognitive enterprise but i also hold that it has not undermined the foundation of metaphysics only a few metaphysicians could have taken metaphysics as a science of the transcendental entities or of the supersensible the empirical attack has at least removed that confusion about metaphysics the perennial philosophy both in the west and east has its concern with self knowledge it is not an accident that socrates heard the oracles of delphi man know thyself the most important school in india has repeatedly held that vocation of philosophy is embodied in atmanam vidhi know thyself hence we can say that metaphysical statements aim at expressing and arousing the state of being a complete self or whole but can an individual become a whole without being in commerce with his physical social and cultural environment the answer is beautiful con- beautifully conveyed to us in bernard bosanquet's individuality and value and the value and destiny of the individual and if an individual has to live in an interactive relationship successfully can he disregard the cognitive statements concerning empirical sciences relating to his environment but as science has only an instrumental value for man as professor john mcmurray has held in the boundaries of science and as all the responses are in the service of restoring and preserving the psychical balance of or equilibrium of an individual according to freud and c g young Uh, so we can say that all cognitive statements remain subservient to the holistic tendency in man any response which helps an individual to satisfy his sovereign and master drive of becoming a whole certainly will have a rhapsodical resonance but this feeling is quite distinct from ordinary affective and emotional states it is eudaimonistic or bliss which pertains to the whole being of an individual two things at once stand out in the holistic statements of metaphysics first arguments mostly linguistic and logical have to be carried out in order to have a genuine holistic state any holistic state felt in relation to a false world would be treated as misplaced and even illusory arguments 
and polemics do form an important part in any metaphysical discourse whether it be vedantic buddhistic or kantian and hegelian but cognitive statements determine the genuineness and the appropriateness of our holistic state the con- at the attainment of which remains the primary end of a metaphysician secondly the metaphysical language has to be skillfully used for evoking a holistic response theologians are now getting aware of convictional w zur d language and of the language of myth and parables ls thorton austin farrer and other image linguistic for inducing numinous experience in the same strain we can say that metaphysical language is delicately balanced by metaphors and analogies for this reason the metaphysical language only superficially will be called as linguistic confusion let me illustrate this point <coughs> theological statements assert that god is omniscient omnipotent and perfect he has created the world out of himself with a view to view, view to cre- having creatures worthy of his fellowship such statements have the purpose of firmly establishing an individual in his endeavor of becoming and realizing himself as a thing of value in that station of life in which he is placed he is in effect assured that his endeavor is not going to be rebuffed for the world is so made that his endeavor of becoming a whole by incorporating the cultural values of mankind must succeed god and creation statements are non cognitive but they have holistic meaning but even this holistic purpose would not be achieved if we do not show that holistic emotion is well founded as something supervening over cognitive achievements arguments and the marshaling of scientific facts are necessary for this assurance but can cognitive statements guarantee this no not at all but philosophical endeavors can show that after all holistic emotions are not unworthy of conscious organisms who have developed a reason by way of administering the satisfaction of man's need all arguments and polemics are so many uh, persuasive statements in the past myths and parables were adequate for the holistic striving in thinkers as logical insight deepened and as myths and parables began to show their insufficiencies of supporting convictional attitude to life so they were exchanged for the employment of metaphorical and analogical employments of scientific terms life entelechy matter evolution theory etc are all terms which have become metaphorical in philosophy on the other hand god soul eternity etc are terms which have become intellectualized to such an extent that they often lose their religious and mythical significance who would worship the god of decarte william james samuel alexander and ward what religious emotion can be expected from the primordial and consequent nature of whitehead's god logical positivism stands for demythologizing and deanalogizing process in philosophy its logic is relentless but can man cease to be a living organism if he is going to be an organism can he be stopped from becoming a whole now man by virtue of his becoming a conscious organism cannot refrain from forming symbolic ideal of himself as a complete whole can this symbolic concept of the self in relation to the universe in which he has been cast be exorcised of its charms i have assumed that Kant was essentially right in holding that man cannot totally shake off the transcendental illusions man has to create a world after his ideals that well up in him by way of fulfilling an holistic holistic purpose deeply implanted in him but of course man cannot consciously allow himself to be duped by language of myths and metaphors who has to meet the demand of precise statements however my contention is that mere precision is not enough for philosophy the constant battle for creating effective metaphors and analogies will remain in philosophy the ding dong battle between myths and scientific concepts for being harmonized in metaphors will continue if one chooses to call this metaphorical language as linguistic confusion then the objector will be partly right he would be wrong however if he would maintain that metaphorical language aims at giving us information about the supersensible world i have shown that modern philosophers were strongly motivated by metaphysical considerations i have sought to show that their vision is unerring but their metaphors have to undergo much modification as suitable vehicles of expressing and evoking holistic experiences to a great extent it is true that hume practiced analytic philosophy but all the rest in an hum- in my humble opinion uh, were primarily metaphysician the book does not claim any originality and certainly not any scholarship it proposes to focalize certain issues in western philosophy which are important for any student of philosophy much material has been taken from the most recent publications and journals thanks for listening